Well, welcome back to the big board. We're having a look at Rise of the Roman Republic. And I, in fact, I don't even remember if I did an introductory video or not. So we'll do a brief recap of the situation. We're moving into the last turn. It's only a three year or three turn scenario. And it uh, is trying to represent the, uh, the, the crossing of the Alps or the, the, the conflict of the Second uh, Punic War after the crossing of the Alps by Hannibal. <clears throat> and so way up north here, you've got uh, the Gal some of the Gallic tribes and they're allied with uh, Hannibal and he's got a fairly substantial army and the battle, the game actually starts with pretty much every force here. There are two consular armies here and uh, two very weak leaders and I think Hannibal gets the first activation or something like that and uh, I think what's supposed to happen there is there's supposed to be a fairly substantial battle and I rolled to avoid that conflict and on a further rereading of those uh, avoidance rules and the DRMs, I may have messed that up. And so the Romans got to skate and uh, live to fight another day. That allowed the Carthaginians to uh, more quickly probably subdue this city. Although it did take most of a, a turn. It took two activations by one of the other leaders because we moved Hannibal off of that city and let someone else conduct the siege. <clears throat> and then uh, the challenge here for both sides is maintaining control of provinces. And in order to do better than history, Hannibal really has to run around uh, with his armed forces and his uh, split his forces up and his leaders up and attempt to uh, dominate militarily uh, for control of these different areas. So Northern Etria, Southern Umbria uh, here and Pisanium here and some other areas. And uh, if you don't have any major victories in combat, you need to control seven regions at the end of three turns, which is a fairly substantial undertaking. Now, obviously, if you capture Rome, uh, it's game over, you win. That would be extremely difficult to do, and in fact, it's 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 probably not worthwhile trying to attack or siege Rome unless you were planning on being incredibly lucky as Hannibal and activating four times and attempting four assaults and looking to roll extremely well to be successful with the assault. Uh, so there's that, <laughs> uh, but the rest of the time. It, it, you're trying to get these seven areas under control, but if you have a major victory, that will reduce the number of areas you need to control or regions you need to control by one. If you have another uh, victory, it will help you uh, reduce that number by one again. So at the end of two turns, we've got three regions under control that I'm aware of, that we're all, we almost have this guy here, I think. I need to get one more township there, unless that's a medium, no. <clears throat> I need to get one more township in here, or two maybe, to capture this. And then uh, what I realized is that there's a disrupted force here. I could probably come in here, even though Hannibal is uh, disrupted. Uh, given his leadership benefit, I could probably come in here, attack this force. It's large enough that I could secure a major victory. That'll drop me down into the range of having to only get, uh, I think, five uh, areas uh, consecutively. So that's something we need to try and do. And in the meantime, the Romans have built uh, another consular army. Both of these forces are fairly heavily beaten up, but uh, the pursuit and butchery rolls were terrible for the for the Romans. But the uh, the construct here, I guess, for the Romans trying to avoid losing or doing worse than historical, is to potentially allocate a military dictator, let him combine all of the these residual armies together, 
or uh, raise his own additional two legions and then try and march out to battle and you know run up the road and reca uh, capture a township or two and inflict some uh, disruptive activity on the on the Carthaginians and I think probably where you won't do as well as history or potentially better than history is because of that because it really is even though you only have a couple of activations each turn for the Romans if they can activate and get at least one continuation they can move and then uh, siege something and then go through the siege attrition exercise that occurs in these games and uh, potentially capture one of these smaller uh, towns here like this guy he's only got one step in it right so I'm taking a chance only putting one step in instead of two or three with the intrinsic garrison that's there and those forces it's probably not going to be enough if the Romans you know run up here with a substantial substantial amount of forces to uh, to mess us up so it's it's a tricky little uh, game of cat and mouse that will probably have to be played and I think it really does lend itself to benefiting the Romans more than more than the uh, the Punic side the Carthaginians uh, Hannibal's got to split split and spread his forces to capture and garrison some of these larger towns they have to be garrisoned and uh, you probably want to try and block roads and things with other townships to slow down any potential uh, sieges like I mentioned so very very interesting game I've been pretty impressed with how quickly I was able to uh, pick up the game uh, having not played it in quite a while and uh, really only having to go back to the rules for uh, siege attrition to make sure I was doing it correctly and then this, the scenario specifics there were some scenario specifics for leaders and then now I'm just about to go look up how we do uh, the allocation of a dictator correctly for the Romans and we'll kind of get after it and see what happens from there. So I thought I'd just check in and uh, share a little bit with you. Enjoying it immensely. I like the combat system in this game. Uh, there's a, it's a lot of DRMs, but that's how they're giving you the flavor of the combat. You know, what, what, are, the, what are the variables with leadership? What are the variables with the quality of the units? What are the variables with the differential in cavalry capability and a number of cavalry? And what are the terrain features and all those other bits and pieces that go into making it a ancient battle? As opposed to many of the other operational games that I've played, well, there's only a couple really, uh, they're extremely abstracted and bear no, no influence or relationship to any sort of notional ancient combat whatsoever this at least gives me the feel that we're we're all in the same the same bucket here uh, and fighting a, a battle on a you know in phalanxes with uh, you know the the legions arrayed correctly and the leadership challenges that they had uh, whether or not they're a veteran or recruit legions and all of this sort of stuff so good stuff anyway thought I'd share a little bit of that with you we'll uh, look forward to catching up with you soon ciao